yeah, uh, a few things. First is uh, this weekend, today and tomorrow, we are going to wear uh, the 42 jerseys in recognition of Jackie Robinson. That was something that was given. Uh, we were given the option this morning to do, and and our we're, as a club, we're going to all wear the 42 jerseys here the next couple of days. Um, the second thing is uh, uh, starting rotation is tomorrow will be Jorge Lopez, and on Monday will be Tom Malone. And the third is uh, we're going to have this move process before the game. Uh, we're going to recall Evan Phillips, and Sean Armstrong is going to go on the IL with um, some. He's got some lower back soreness that uh, that's why he hasn't been out there the last few days. But he he should be fine and, and should be short term, and he should be ready to go when he comes off the uh, when his ten days are up. So those are my lead-ins. Okay. Thanks, Brandon. Sorry about that. Um, we'll go back to Rock first then. Uh, Brandon, what was the thought process when you're deciding uh, for the rotation for the weekend? What made you decide to take, take a look at Lopez? I think we just want to, we would like to see that, see Jorge in the, in the rotation and see what that looks like. And, and he, he's been a starter in Kansas City for the last couple of years. And I like the way he's throwing the ball out of the pen, even though his numbers don't, for me, don't, don't show uh, how he's been pitching since he's been with us. And uh, we're going to give him the opportunity to start tomorrow. Dave Ginsburg. Brandon, uh, how did uh, Glacius emerge from yesterday? Hopefully, uh, I see he's in the starting lineup, so hopefully okay. And um, Hunter Harvey, was he an option as one of the guys to bring up since you mentioned he would probably be on the team before the end of the month? Yeah, I think Harv will be um, in the next day or two. Everything goes well today. So you'll see Hunter Harvey out there uh, very shortly. Uh, yeah, Iggy felt good after the game last night. Um, even with stretching it a couple times, <laughs> which I would, which I was hoping he wasn't going to do, but he did, um, and he felt good after the game and wanted to play shortstop today, so he's in there. Rich Dubrow, if you're up next. With uh, with Armstrong, was this something that had been there for that had been there for a while? Uh, flared up. It's just a flare up. So uh, uh, it's been a few days ago now where. His, um, his, he had some lower back soreness. And uh, uh, so we were just treating it and, and feel like that he, would, he could be possibly be ready. And it just, it's still a little bit sore. So we decided to put him on the IL, probably backdate it. And then hopefully he'll be ready. Um, it's going to be short term. I think everybody feels confident that it's, it's, a, it's, a minor, it's a minor issue. Nathan Ruiz, you're up next. Hey Brandon, I know Darren came into Darren Holmes came into the organization with with a biomechanical background, and I know you guys are trying to boost your analytics. How much do you think those two elements have have played a role in the growth your relief pitchers have taken this year? Yeah, I think Holmes he's been huge for us. Really do. I've really been impressed with him. I heard so many great things about him. I'm close friends with the pitching coach in Colorado, Steve Foster. Um, I talked to Bud Black about him also. I've, I've, I have met Darren in the past, um, just being on the, in the other on the other end. Um, we play the Rockies, um, and I really liked him. And the more I researched him and, and talked to people, uh, this is a, a guy that uh, could really help out our pitchers. And that, he has definitely done that. And I see, I see a huge difference. Uh, just, our, the, just our guys have improved out of the bullpen. And he really he's one of those guys that really cares, player invested, no, low ego, and just wants to get guys better. And, he, and he, uh, the guys have, I know the guys really like him also down there. And this guy's pitched a long time in the big leagues in a lot of different roles. A lot of time, uh, he was, you know, he was a closer. He's been a setup guy. He's been, he's been all different sorts of roles in the bullpen. And that's extremely helpful to have somebody to lean on for those guys down there. Stan Charles, you're up next. Brandon, uh, with the trade deadline looming, are you under any – sort of hands off on using anyone? I mean, like, is Givens a go like he would be two weeks ago? Or are you reluctant to, or does Mike give you any guidance that way? Well, we, uh, we have conversations about our club daily. Um, uh, Givens is a go tonight. I, I, I didn't use him. He was a no-go no last night. Okay. Um, and that was mainly from a workload standpoint. So I had a few guys that I wasn't going to use. I wasn't going to use Army, obviously. Um, I wasn't going to use Paul Fry either. 
and I wasn't going to use Givens. And that was strictly me uh, and my conversations with those players, letting them, for me, just giving them a rest. So it's like the off day was a rest, the off, you know, not the scheduled off day, but we had an off day the last day in Tampa. Um, and then yesterday to really kind of regroup and, and refresh both or all three of those guys. Um, Army still still has the lower back soreness, but but for Fry and Gibbons, they've been they've been handed a pretty heavy workload, and I wanted to take care of them. Brett Hollander, you're up next. Hey Brandon, just uh, some observations from you on how Brian Mountcastle has looked, and particularly his approach and and how he's done against the breaking ball so far. Yeah, I'm, I've been impressed. You know, this is. Um, you know, I see the video. I saw him in summer camp, obviously. Saw him in spring training. I'm seeing better at bats right now. And uh, I really like, you know, I like, the, I like the ball being put in play with two strikes. And, and Ryan has done that. You know, last night, even, you know, making things happen where forced in the air. Um, I love the way he's getting down the line. Um, I think he's showing a, a more athleticism and more speed than, I've, than I saw before. Um, so, yeah, for him to be able to take a breaking ball, drive it the other way for a single, um, the power is going to come. I don't think we have anybody has any concerns about that. Ryan gets the barrel of the baseball with any sort of lift. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hit hard. and It's going to go in the air over the fence. So it's now becoming a hitter. And, and um, for him to take a breaking ball, go the other way, to him to put, be able to put the ball in play with two strikes last night, make things happen. Um, that's winning baseball, and that's that's uh, that's been a really really impressive. So very impressed with his at bat so far. We'll go to Steve Molesky next. Steve, Brandon, the Orioles have more bunt hits than any team in baseball. A lot of that Cedric, of course, but there are other guys who have contributed. Um, are you encouraging more bunting, or is it simply you have guys who are good at it, and do they kind of have free reign to any time survey the field, and if they feel it's there, take it. Yeah, I think you, you know, you, you are personnel. It's personnel driven. So guys like Cedric, Velasquez, uh, Alberto, that's comfortable doing it. Um, you know, they're free to, to lay down a drag bone whenever, whenever they feel, I feel like, if they feel like it's the right thing to do. Um, we'll talk about timing of it a little bit. There's been a few times where I, uh, I, I told them I'd rather you swing the bat there, but um, there's something that they work on and something that's going to be a part of their game. And especially like right now, we're playing tight games where we're not hitting a ton of homers. We're not scoring a ton of runs um, for them to make something happen and, and try to get on base somehow. I think that that's, that's a positive. You see Burt do it last night. Um, you know, Cedric's done it a handful of times really, and been really good at it. Um, you know, Drew squares around quite a bit. It's got to be part of his game also. These guys aren't going to be hitting 25 homers. So they got to be able to, to get on base anyway and, and be table setters. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 I like that they, that they try it and they do it and they have confidence in it. Pete Gilbert, you're up next. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Brandon, I'm wondering just your, your general takeaways from the new extra innings rule and maybe – if you with how you thought you would approach it before you had to actually do the games and has anything changed uh, now that you have had um, some some times with you starting with the runner on second well we've had mixed results um but yeah i i like it i think it uh i think it's exciting it's a lot you know it's a lot different at, on the road than at home um the strategy changes. I normally wouldn't bunt on the road like I did last night, but I felt good about Solser facing the guys he was going to face in the in the tenth. And I felt like uh, adding, you know, with us really having a tough time scoring runs right now, it feels like. Um, but to be able to put the pressure on them, and and Dolis has got great stuff and a heavy sinker. And I just thought Cedric was going to have a tough time driving the ball to the pull side at worst to get to get Rio to third base. Uh, so I think your strategy changes a lot, home and away, I, and I, I, I enjoy it. Joe Chazzy, you're up next. Go ahead, Joe. Brandon, you, you mentioned how, how Mountcastle's uh, speed and, and his athleticism. Um, are, are those things about him that you think he always had, or is that 
is that uh, just the function of somebody, a young kid coming up here and really going max effort and trying to stay here and really, really playing really hard? Yeah, I just think, I mean, drafted as a shortstop, so he's been played in the middle of the field his, his entire life. Um, but yeah, I just see him getting down the line good. And, and, um, I think that there's, uh, yeah, I just, I, I think he's, I think he's a good athlete. And, and, and I think that I'm seeing that more now than I, than I did before. Um, and I like, I like what I see. I like the guy he's got, he, he's, uh, he's got raw power. He runs well. Um, he's been taking good at bats. So it's been impressive so far. Nathan Ruiz, do you have a follow-up? Brandon, you've used Cole Sulcer across multiple innings a lot of times this year. You did it a lot with Michael Givens last year. Is that just a way you like to use your top reliever, your closer type, or is that just kind of a, a – it's a, it's a result of the situation who's available to you? It's, I don't – I would rather not, but it's a result of the situation. They had all – last night they had all left hand. Sulcer had a really quick, clean ninth inning. And Sulcer has been so good against left-handed hitters this year. Um, that changeup is is really good. You can go top to bottom with those with left-handed hitters. And you saw in the ninth, he faced three premier left-handed hitters, and and really pitched well. Easy ninth inning. Um, I would prefer not to have him go back out. However, they had, you know, they had more left-handers coming. I didn't have a left-hander available, and uh, he felt great after a quick inning. And, and then he got two quick outs, and then Gritchick comes up. So. Um, it's not an ideal situation for me to use him two innings in that type of a role. Uh, you know, he might on a different team where if he was a sixth, seventh inning guy, I think that that's a multiple. He could do he could do a multiple inning, um, but a ninth inning type of situation, I'd rather have him not someone not go back out there for the tenth. Um, but it was it's a little bit personnel driven. And a follow up from Stan. Go ahead, Stan. Brandon, I just wanted to revisit briefly this Randall Gritchick uh, jinx that the Orioles seem to have. A 247 lifetime hitter, and I, I know what kind of player he is. What would it, what would he, what would have to happen for you to really just pitch around him at this point in time? Well, I mean, I've seen Randall Gritchick a lot. I so I was in Chicago. He was in St. Louis. Saw him yep. year after year there. Um, this is obviously the best I've ever seen him. He's swinging the bat very, very well against us. He's swing, He's having a nice year, and he's swinging the bat great against us. Um, we were pitching him extremely well yesterday, and Cole just left a, a slider that kind of backed up right in the middle part of the plate. So if he executes the slider down and away, if he executes a pitch there, I don't. We're not having this conversation. You know what I mean? Because he has hurt us. There's no doubt about it, but that was just a, uh, I think Solz would tell you that was just a, a poor pitch in a, in a situation. And like we've talked about for the last year plus, our middle misses seem to go over the fence and not choppers down the line or, or line drives the center for a single. Um, we've I just, some, wanted, I just yeah. wanted to ask if it was some, some type of stubbornness on your part, and I have a respect for you. But sometimes it seems like people get ticked off at somebody that beats them, and you just go, I'm not going to let this guy beat me. And I was wondering if it was coming from that at all. I think that there's – yeah, I mean, I feel like I – I mean, it, listen, I, it's not that I didn't, it didn't think about it. But then I also thought about Vlad Guerrero Jr., who hits right-handed pitchers better, super, you know, so far this year, who's hit three balls on the nose against us last night, as well as an opposite field homer, and then a rocket to left and a rocket to right. And – to pick your poison. Do I want to put the winning run on first base with a guy that's a 240 career hitter, or do I want to face and face Guerrero, or do I go face let the guy face Solcer, who's just got five outs in a row and throwing the ball great? 